years of his life, incarcerated in the bitterest jails in the Gulag. And when I saw him coming out of Russia in 1966, just a scant 11 years after he had been released, he looked as if he had been on vacation. He was in his early 70s at the time, and his wife, who did not go to jail, she looked like she had been incarcerated for many years, and she wasn't healthy. He was filled with vim and vigor, smile on his face, his back was straight as an arrow, and he looked perfectly fit. He had fulfilled his end of the bargain. As bad as it was, he realized it had nothing to do with him. He was there only to fulfill God's mission in being in the Gulag. So let's go into the concept of Maise Ovot Simen Abonim. What happens to the fathers is a sign for children. How can we understand this? So the first thing that you must understand is that there's an approach from the commentaries that the reason why the children must go through the same uh, arena as the fathers is because the father somehow or other missed and sinned. For example, uh, the reason why we went back into Egypt and we had to uh, settle there and become slaves there and eventually go out with great wealth and grandeur is because Abraham entered Egypt with his wife Sarah and instead of being bold and fearless Abraham said she's my sister because he feared being killed by the Egyptians on account of his wife and so we had to suffer all of the time that we were in Egypt in order to correct the sin of a mission of Abraham. There's another position that is as follows. The Torah maps out the, what happens in the world and in order to prevent that which happens to Israel later from overwhelming Israel, God had preordained that similar events would happen to the fathers. And that two things. A, we would learn the lesson, lesson from the father. B, the father would pray in our behalf. And C, the fact that the Torah talks about a similar event and gives us the Torah's insight is not just an ordinary inspiration and lesson, but rather what is called an Asinas Koach. It gives us the ability, the power, if you will. It gives us the energy. It gives us the authority to do what we have to do in whichever situation we're at. Because the forefathers lived through the same thing as we did, and it's recorded in the Torah, this gives us the insight, the inspiration, and the Torah's power and authority to be able to change wherever we're at. Those are the first two approaches. But there's a third approach. The third approach is as follows. It has nothing to do with correction of sin. It also has nothing to do with our need to become inspired to overcome our situation and to get the power from the Torah to be able to overcome the situation for which we find ourselves, which comes as a result of our own sins, our own faults, or requires us to reach a higher level. None of that is necessarily true. It's possible for a person to be in difficult straits without having sinned, without having anybody else sin, and without having to have a particular goal to reach to a higher level. Of course, we all have to reach higher levels, but that's not necessarily the intent. It is possible for a person to be at the highest level and still be in a pickle. 
The question is why? And the answer is, we're not here for ourselves. The purpose of the soul's descent into this world is not for ourselves, but for the sake of those whom we come to serve, for the place in which we are found, and for the people that are around us, and to transform the area and the people and the whole situation. That's what we're here for. We're here to transform. And that's why it says, Maisa of a simul abonim, because that is the divine plan. And since there's a divine plan, it has to have been recorded in some kind of way so that we can realize it's a divine plan. Once we realize that what is happening to us has already happened to the, to the fathers, then we realize this is part of the Torah mission, that just as the fathers had to be in that particular place at that particular moment, not for themselves, because they were perfect people, so too, even though we're imperfect, even though we're sinners, even though we're lacking certain inspirations and certain intellect and certain development, that's not the reason why we're here. Don't look for personal satisfaction and growth. That's not why you're here. If you can do that by elevating the place that you're at, fine. But realize that the purpose of your being here is in order to make a change in your world. And the power and the necessity that you have to do so is the reason why it's recorded in the Torah with the story of the forefathers. Because you see, we are part of the soul of the forefathers. We're not separate from them. We are actually Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in miniature. And therefore, just as they did their thing to change their world, we as their parts, not just as their agents, as sparks of their souls, must also do, and do the same and change the world where we're at. So we're not here to correct sin. We're not here to get inspired. If we do that, that's fine. But the purpose is to make the world a better world commonly called Tikkun Olam. But Tikkun Olam does not come from gay rights or lesbian rights or abortion rights. Tikkun Olam comes from transforming the world into a world for God, a world for Mashiach. And part of that is Chesed Verachmim, compassion and kindness. We are here to show compassion and kindness to all the people in the world. Even if there are a bunch of Shin Mem Kufs and treat us improperly. Our job is to show kindness even when people show us disrespect. And that's the lesson that we learn later from Joseph and his brothers. Joseph's brothers were miserable to him, tried to kill him, sold him as a slave. What did Joseph do? He fed them and clothed them, sustained them for as long as he lived for several generations.